It's 4.30. This is WKYT This Morning. One month after a deadly Lexington shooting, the victim's family is marching to try and help find the killer. A man who was considered missing from the Fayette County Detention Center says he wasn't missing at all. It was just a big mix-up. And Governor Matt Bevin has announced a new training center to help out coal miners in eastern Kentucky. We'll have that and your weather forecast. It's all coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. So good to have you on WKYT as we start off this Thursday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. It is October 13th. We just missed Friday the 13th. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday. And today we're going to see a little bit of a cold front move in after yeah. this week of beautiful weather. You can already tell it's a little chilly uh, oh, out there yeah. this morning. And uh, we'll be watching that as the day goes along. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Well, that front is right over us. And those temperatures are there in the 60s along with the cloud cover, along with even some rain outside early this morning. I'm kind of bummed about it, not going to lie to you, because it's not a lot of rain. I mean, it looks like they're on the screen, but this isn't very heavy rain. You're not going to get much out of it. Now, we're holding on to that rain sliding eastbound, so some of these roadways will be wet as you're traveling early this morning, and we're there in the 60s, a couple of 50s mixed in as well. Here's your sky cast. We get into a dry afternoon, 63, just a few showers here and there. Afternoon, though, uh, the showers actually move on out. It's mainly during the morning hours. We're going to go through the timeline. I'll show you an hour by hour forecast coming up in just about 10 minutes. And we'll see you then. Thank you. More than a month after a shooting killed a pregnant mother in Lexington, her family is still looking for answers. Police still haven't made any arrests in the death of Mariah Coleman and her unborn son, Jacoby. Coleman's family, friends, and others in the community marched in downtown Lexington. Hoping it helps bring them closer to justice. WKYT's Monique Blair has the story. What do we want? Justice! October 12th, a special day marked on many calendars here in Lexington, the day Jacoby Jones was scheduled to enter the world. And as much as so many people were looking forward to Jacoby's birth, it was his mom, Mariah, who just couldn't wait to meet her first child. She counted down the days. Until it was time for our baby to be born, this baby brought her life, and someone stolen that from us. So dozens of Mariah and Jacoby's friends and family members marched. They marched to remember, and they marched to demand the killer or someone who knows who the killer is to come forward. Who we want it for? When do we want it? There should be more people here. My prayers is going to be for those who are not here. Now, another purpose of this rally was to draw awareness to this petition that Mariah's mother has created. What she's asking for is for security cameras to be installed in the Winburn subdivision, where criminal activity is known to occur. She's hoping she gets enough signatures that she will get the attention of Mayor Jim Gray. We should not have to worry about being shot in cold blood in the street doing everyday living activities. And so while she does what she can to prevent this violent act from happening to yet another family, Mariah's mother will focus on the memories she did make in her daughter's short 22 years of life. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Kentucky State Senator Reggie Thomas was also at that rally. He addressed the crowd saying he plans to advocate in the state legislature and address the issue of violence that Lexington is currently facing. We have some new information about a crash that killed three people in Bell County. Kentucky State Police identified the victims as 51-year-old William Hampton, 53-year-old Dina Hampton, and 51-year-old Bobby Miller. The crash happened late yesterday afternoon on Highway 119, not far from Pineville. Police say an SUV crossed the center line of the road and hit a Toyota Camry head-on. Police say both drivers were wearing their seat belts. The passenger was not. Police do not know if alcohol or drugs played factors in the crash. A judge has given him a furlough because he says he had been commissioned to paint some art. But when an inmate's pass was extended, the Fayette County Detention Center didn't get the message. So on Tuesday night, the jail mistakenly said that he had escaped custody. And he says that he wants to make sure it doesn't happen again. WKYT's Sabira Rayford talked to the missing prisoner. For Isaac Moody, the scratchy sound of his pen rubbing against his paper gives him gratitude. It has been a, a blessing that has traveled me well. 
As a young adult, Moody says he was in and out of trouble. He says he's done some things he's not proud of, but that changed when he picked up his pen and started drawing portraits. This has given my life meaning and um, purpose when at times the circumstances seem to imply that there isn't any meaning. Recently, Moody got behind on child support payments, which landed him in jail. He says he got a job offer to draw a portrait. The judge let him out on furlough to do the job. But when he went back to get an extension to finish the project, that's when things got messy. A close friend of mine's family member sent us the screenshot from a Facebook post or whatever from one of the local news stations. And, um, of course, my, my heart started beating immediately. Moody's extension to finish his commission portrait had been approved by the judge. But jail officials say they didn't really received the paperwork showing he was allowed to be out of jail until Friday morning. So Tuesday night, an escape warrant was issued for Moody's arrest because the original furlough required him to get back in jail by that morning. And instead of looking at his artwork, people were looking at his mugshot. I was talking to somebody on the phone um, after we got everything worked out, and um, they said, how you feeling? I was just like, you know, I'm kind of sad, for real. Uh, it's been two days of, uh, you know, elevated heart rate and um, just drama unnecessary for myself, my friends, and my, and, my, and my family. Moody says he hasn't received an apology, but his hope is that the court will continue to allow him to do his portraits. In Lexington, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. And officials at the Fayette County Detention Center say the escape charge has been dropped. They did not want to talk with us on camera. Governor Bevan and other state leaders have announced a new training center to help out of work coal miners in eastern Kentucky. The Haas East Kentucky Advanced Manufacturing Institute in Paintsville will welcome its first class in February. It will offer 16 week programs to train former coal miners to operate the Haas company's equipment. Haas is the largest machine tool builder in the Western world. One man says he took a similar training course elsewhere and now works for Lockheed Martin. When you get laid off in the mines, currently right now, there's not a lot out there. And, you know, it was a new opportunity for me, and the money is very comparable to mining. Uh, and, you know, it's been, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a good thing for me and my family. Organizers of the new training center say there are jobs available for people to complete the program within a reasonable driving distance of most towns in eastern Kentucky. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are dealing with issues off the campaign trail. WikiLeaks released more emails that it claims came from the account of Clinton's campaign chairman. And some women have come forward claiming Trump touched them inappropriately years ago. Craig Boswell has the latest from both campaigns. Donald Trump told supporters in Ocala, Florida, that ISIS is hoping and praying Hillary Clinton is elected president so it can take over the U.S. The election of Hillary Clinton would lead, in my opinion, to the almost total destruction of our country as we know it. At her Colorado rally, Clinton called Trump desperate. They're going to use a, quote, scorched earth strategy. That's all they have left, pure negativity, pessimism. WikiLeaks released another 1,900 emails it claims came from the account of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. The Clinton camp says Russia instigated the hack to benefit Trump. They always blame Russia. And then they say Donald Trump is friends with Putin. I don't know Putin, folks, I promise. Russian President Vladimir Putin questioned whether who did the hacking is really that important compared to the information that's contained within the leaks. On the heels of last week's release of a video where Trump is heard making lewd comments, there are new allegations of Trump having questionable interactions with women. A former Miss Arizona claims Trump walked in on Miss USA contestants in their dressing room while he owned the pageant. The New York Times also profiled two women who claimed Trump groped them decades ago. The Trump campaign called the article fiction and a character assassination. The New York Times has endorsed Clinton. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. And reports have also surfaced in Seattle and West Palm Beach regarding Trump's alleged behavior toward women. WKYT this morning just getting started. It is 439 on your Thursday. Coming up, find out why a new study is questioning the effectiveness of fitness trackers that go on your wrist. That story is coming up right after Micah's forecast. And we finally have some rain in the forecast, too. It's not much, but it is there as that front tracks on through much colder conditions. I'm going to show you that in the forecast coming up next. 
Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We actually have some rain outside. One little complex to the north and one little complex to the south. Central zones were actually getting bypassed, of course, right here in Lexington and the Bluegrass region. Go through Mountain Victory, Somerset, through Pulaski County, off toward London, Corbin area. Heads up London, you're about to pick up on some light showers and even some embedded moderate downpours. So uh, there's some rain within that. You're not going to get much, but at least it's something there on the yards and crops. Fly through uh, London here in just the next few minutes. McKee as well. Go through Rockcastle County. Richmond about to get in on the mix. Lancaster, you're already there. Uh, Bryantsville, it's about to leave you, but you still got a little bit more back toward the west. And you can see that across Stanford. 27 is going to be a wet go at it. If you're about to leave through Waynesburg, back toward Liberty across 127. There's a nice little shower, too. So some of us are picking up some rain. Some of us are not. Frankfurt, Moorhead, we're not seeing the rain just yet. London, like I said, that rain is really moving on in now. And then Lexington, we're staying dry at this moment. So you're about to walk out the door. Really, it's far north and south. That's where you can see the better opportunity of rain right now. Going through the day, it looks like the rain will be around still roughly noontime. And then it starts to fade from east to, or west to east, rather. And so we're going to see a pretty nice afternoon in terms of the sky conditions. So we should start to get these clouds on out of here. But look at that temperature, 63 degrees for a high. It's going to be pretty chilly. Throw that wind in there. It's not going to feel great heading off toward the evening hours. We're there in the 50s. Let's talk about court days. Big time going on in Mount Sterling and Preston on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I expect all three of these days to be mainly dry. I don't see much of a chance of rain. I'd lean toward the better opportunity being on Saturday, but even that is relatively small at 30%. So let's talk about your seven day forecast. Uh, like I say, you'll have some gusty showers today, guys. It's mainly during the morning hours. Then it works its way on out as we go through the afternoon. Your weekend forecast isn't a bad one. A couple of showers here and there. For the most part, though, we stay dry with temperatures lower 70s. It's not All a right. bad forecast. No, not bad. It's here pretty here. pleasant uh, days here. Anyway. Right. All right. Thank you, Micah. Millions of Americans use them, but a new study is questioning just how accurate those wrist worn fitness trackers really are in monitoring your heart rate. Yeah, Kenneth Craig. Folks have them. <laughs> yeah, those Fitbits, of course. <laughs> Kenneth Craig has a look in today's Health Watch. When Aaron Isenson hits the pavement for his daily walk, he makes sure his Fitbit is monitoring his steps and heart rate. I'm not the elite athlete who cares that much. You know, I just want to make sure that it's up and beating and you know, moving a little faster when I'm out walking. But a new study from the Cleveland Clinic shows getting an accurate heart rate reading on the popular wrist devices can vary. People are increasingly relying on these monitors to record heart rate, and they often become very concerned and anxious when they obtain values that appear completely out of the norm. Researchers looked at four wearable wrist monitors, including the Fitbit and Apple Watch, testing them side by side with a heart strap monitor and an electrocardiogram, or EKG, the gold standard of heart rate testing. The Apple Watch was more than 90% accurate, while the Fitbit was in the 80s in terms of accuracy, and the other two were in between. Researchers say the chest strap monitor readings were virtually identical to the EKG. Dominique Bastos is a marathon runner. She owns a Fitbit. I've bought them. I've spent the money, <laughs> but I've never really used them. She says she prefers to measure her heart rate the old-fashioned way. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. Fitbit says it stands by its heart tracking technology and adds that Fitbit trackers are not intended to be medical devices. All right, just a little maybe inspiration. There you go. <laughs> there exactly. You go. Time this morning is 446 on WKYT this morning. We're back with more in just a moment. Fit County School leaders need your help naming the county's new public high school. We'll tell you how you can submit your entries coming up after the break. Good morning and welcome back into WKYT this morning. The time now is 449 on your Thursday. The federal government has refused to give Kentucky another extension to update driver's licenses to comply with the Real ID Act. Unless the state makes changes to comply with the federal law by 2018, you will not be able to use a Kentucky driver's license to board a flight. State leaders say Kentucky's main problem is that the state does not have a centralized license issuing agency. County clerks issue the driver's license. Is here. This year, Governor Bevan vetoed a bill that would work to bring the state into compliance, claiming there was a lot of public opposition and misunderstanding. Some people were concerned that the Real ID Act represents the creation of a national identification card database, and that's just not the case. 
Starting in January, you will not be able to use a Kentucky driver's license to get into places like nuclear power plants and some military facilities. Police have a warning for drivers after they say a good Samaritan was robbed and attacked along I-64. It happened early yesterday morning near Exit 53 in Franklin County. Frankfort police say the victim noticed two men waving at drivers as if they were stranded and needed help. When the driver stopped, police say the men stabbed him multiple times and robbed him before running off. Thankfully, the victim was not seriously injured. Police say you should call them if you see a stranded driver, but you don't feel comfortable stopping. I definitely want our community and, and the public to help people. That's, that's why I became a police officer. But again, use caution and, and use that common sense approach if it doesn't look right. Something is, is absolutely out of sorts. You may not want to stop. Police have not made any arrests. They say the robbers were two men driving a silver pickup. The embattled CEO of Wells Fargo has announced he is resigning effective immediately. John Stump spent the last 10 years as the bank's leader. He was harshly criticized for not doing enough to stop a scandal involving phony bank accounts. Regulators say Wells Fargo employees opened as many as 2 million fraudulent accounts without customers knowing it to meet sales goals. In a statement, Stump said it was best that he step down from the company. He also gave up his title as bank chairman. New developments in the case against a man police say abandoned dozens of horses in Mercer County. Charles Burrell entered an Alford plea to nine counts of animal cruelty last month. Yesterday, a hearing was held in the Mercer County Fiscal Court's lawsuit against Burrell. During the hearing, county leaders said they haven't been able to find rightful owners of nearly 40 of the abandoned horses, and they're looking for Burrell to give up his rights to those horses. First responders in Anderson County say you might want to think twice before buying a clown costume for Halloween. As you've probably heard, there's been a string of clown sightings and clown pranks all around the country in recent months, including some in Kentucky. So the Anderson County Sheriff's Office and Lawrenceburg Police have this message for Halloween shoppers. We want parents and kids just to be mindful when they pick out their costumes this year that uh, maybe they might not want to go with a clown costume. You know, if they do, that's fine. We're not telling them they can't, but it's just something to keep in mind. The sheriff also discourages people from dressing up as a clown as a prank because many people have been scared by clown sightings. Fayette County school leaders need a name for Lexington's new public high school, and they're asking for your help. The school is now under construction off Winchester Road near Hamburg. It's scheduled to open next August. School leaders are now accepting suggested names for the school and seeking volunteers to serve on the naming committee. You have until October 28th to suggest a name. If you're interested, we have information for you at WKYT.com. And there are lots of suggestions out mm -hmm. there, so we'll see what happens. 4.53 is our time, and coming up next, to look at some of the stories our news team is working on for you right now. And we'll have another look at your Kentucky forecast coming up. 4.56 our time on WKYT this morning. Now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you right now. We have some new information this morning on a crash that killed three people in Bell County. Police have released the names of the victims and told us uh, they have uh, whether or not they were wearing seat belts. We have that information as well. And we'll have a full report coming up shortly. We are also tracking a death investigation out of Rowan County, which is on Old Hilda Road just north of Moorhead. We've been making phone calls all morning to bring you the very latest information on this case. We'll give you the details at the top of the hour on WKYT this morning. Off to a pretty pleasant day out there. We're going to have some cloud cover, though. Mm -hmm. Let's check in right now with Micah. Yeah, with some of those clouds, it's going to throw off a little bit of rain. Remember, this isn't very heavy rain. You're not going to get much out of it, but at least it's rain, and we have really the bulk of it to the north and to the south at this moment. Rolling through London, so it's going to be a wet go at it. Cross 75 as you're traveling here in the next 30, 45 minutes. Heads up for a bulk of rain rolling on through, but most, most in the central zones are dry. We're not seeing anything in Frankfurt nor Lexington. We're going to go over those rain chances when they move on out. If we have any more as we head towards your weekend, that's coming up with another two hours of WKYT News.